Hey everybody, um, this is my first Facebook Live. Uh, maybe it won't be my last, we'll see how this one goes. Um, I was asked by my coach if I've ever done live before and I said that I had not. It's a bit more vulnerability and a bit more authenticity to go live, I think. I, I can do videos and if I don't like them, I can delete them and I can do five more <laughs> of the same one until I like what I have. So this is a little bit tougher for me. But he had um, a request and the request was to talk about um, post-traumatic growth and alcoholism, which are two very huge topics to talk about. And while they go hand in hand, there's a really a lot to each of these topics. And number one is I actually didn't even know what post-traumatic growth was, to be honest. So I had to look that up. And it was identified by two psychologists in the 1990s. And based on their research, it describes five categories of growth that occur over time. Um, which really, I kind of think this fits into pop psychology and I am not huge on pop psychology at all because pop psychology is a lot of feel good, gratitude, you know, everything is positive about life, which is fantastic and we need to remain positive. But life is not perfect, life is very messy actually and there's a lot of bad things that happen and we get in our own heads, um, and we have a really hard time getting out and we need to know that it's okay that you're not 100% positive all the time. Sure, it's great to have positivity and it's great to, um, you know, be grateful, but that's, that's just one part of who you are. And so the five categories of growth for post-traumatic growth is number one, survivors of trauma recognize and embrace new opportunities. Two, they forge stronger relationships with loved ones as well as with victims who suffered in the same way. Um, three, they cultivate inner strength through the knowledge that they have overcome tremendous hardship. Four, they gain a deeper appreciation for life. And five, their relationship to religion and spirituality changes and evolves over time. So that's kind of the five categories there. And basically, I think if you break this down, what it's telling you is they learn how to grow with their trauma. That's, that's all it is. They are not getting stuck. What happens when we get stuck? Well, I think that's where the alcoholism comes into play. Um, a lot of us, and, and I mean, there's billions of people on this earth, so a lot of people have had deep, deep trauma where we are born into a house and the people that we are born into the house with are supposed to protect us on a day-to-day -day basis and they end up being the monsters in our lives. And that is very difficult to overcome, especially if you end up living with these people till you're 18. That's almost two decades of your life with abuse. So what happens in that time? A lot of times kids and teens will go seek what they need somewhere else. You know, if, if we're feeling unloved, if we're feeling no connection, if we're getting abused every day, we don't want to be in that mindset. We don't want to be in that space. So kids and teens will go and find different things. And a lot of times that is going to be alcohol, drug use, and sex. Um, you also have cutting that you can throw in there and eating disorders. And we're doing this, kids are doing this to get control back into their lives, right? That's, uh, that's, that's what they do. And when we're abused every day, every other day, once a week, it doesn't matter. Um, when we're being told that, you know, we're worthless, uh, nobody likes us, or, you know, how can you do that? And your parents are yelling at you constantly. These are going to leave kids and teens with the worst feelings on the inside. And when your friends show up with an alcoholic beverage or with a blunt, you're more susceptible to try it. And once you're more susceptible to try it, we want to try it again, especially because it makes us feel so good 
to have that alcohol or that drug in our system. And then it becomes a pattern. And, and what do we have? Like two, three, five years of this pattern of trying to seek other behaviorisms to make us feel good on the inside um, so that when we go back to wherever we're supposed to be and we know that we can, we can do this and we can feel good. And no matter what we're going through, we'll get through it. So we have that issue where um, we we start drinking or we start doing drugs, right? And then from there, we go into our adulthood and we're already using substances to make us feel good. So what do you do as an adult? You just kind of continue that. Um, and some adults can, can do these five steps and they can get better and they can move forward with their life uh, and they can recognize and embrace new opportunities. They can forge stronger relationships. Sometimes we, um, you know, they bond with other victims, which can kind of be, can be called trauma bonding at times. Um, they've got this inner strength. They, they know they can overcome tremendous hardship, but sometimes the hits keep coming over and over and over again and and we don't know that there's a better way out there because we just can't um we just can't fathom it i think that is what happens with our alcohol and substance abuse like i said these are like two really big topics that my coach wanted me to share and i know why he did want me to share them um but it's, it's not simple. Post-traumatic growth, you know, growing with your trauma, bringing your demons with you isn't the easiest thing to do in the world, especially if you grow up in a horrific home. It's really, really hard to do this. Um, so I just wanted to keep this short uh, because the topic's so big. I don't really have a whole lot to say uh, on it besides... Um, Oh, see, going live is hard. <laughs> I would have just stopped the video at this point, but I think the, the baseline is you have to find inner strength and a reason to, to stop doing what you're doing. That's like the, the big thing. And if you can't stop on your own, that's why there's things out there like um, AA, you know, SA, um, Substance Abuse Anonymous, Alcoholism Anonymous, you have therapists, these people, these programs, um, especially therapists, are going to be able to dig into your trauma a little bit more with you. And they're going to be able to help you learn how to grow with your trauma. But it truly does come within, in the end, because you could go see a therapist and you could see a therapist for five years. You could see a therapist for 10 years. And if you don't want to make that change, you will not make that change. You'll continue to use your substance. Uh, and you have to recognize that within you. Like, what's going to make you stop using your substance? What's going to help you grow instead of what's going to hold you back? Who are you surrounding yourself with? What kind of mental talk are you using? Can we do some replacement thinking? Um, can we, you know, build up a pro and con list of why we should use and why we shouldn't use? Surround yourself with people who have overcome that sort of stuff and don't surround yourself with people who are still using substances. It's a lot easier to go with people who use substances and who won't look down on you for it than it is to go somewhere and say, I need help, I'm ready to change, and I'm ready to be a new person. So yeah, I guess that was my little blurb on Facebook Live. But what I would like to know um, is... Do you guys have other topics you want me to go live with? I would love to dig into some other topics, maybe be a little bit more specific. Um, these two are kind of a broad alcoholism. There are many, many reasons why people drink. There are many reasons why people continue to drink. Um, <clears throat> and post-traumatic growth is, again, a huge topic, kind of like PTSD is almost. Like, what is it in there that you want to know? Do you want to know what makes people tick? Um, why people can move forward and others can't? Why do people get stuck? 
Anyways, if you guys have anything else you want to know, if there's any other topics you'd like to talk about, I would love to do another Facebook Live. This wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Um, I really felt like I would throw up before I got on, even texted one of my friends that, <laughs> but called another one. It's like a lifeline, right? And it turned out okay. So I'm willing to do it again, but I need to know, like, message, you know, in here what you think would be a good topic to delve a little bit deeper into.